Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 49. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. Today, we're going to talk about what is Bitcoin. What you'll learn is, what is Bitcoin? Should you invest in Bitcoin? And what is the dark side of Bitcoin? I've received so many questions about Bitcoin, I decided to podcast about it. It's not typically the kind of thing I choose to talk about because it's not what I would really consider, you know, a traditional investment. But I've had so many people in my mastermind ask me, clients, friends, it's come up over and over and over. So I wanted to do this podcast to let you know what Bitcoin's all about, to give you the pros and cons, and to give you my take on what is happening there. So Bitcoin is a new currency that was created in 2009 by an unknown person using the alias Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoins were stored in a digital wallet, which exists either in the cloud or on a person's computer. So there is no physical Bitcoin. It just is what they call a cryptocurrency. It just exists in your computer and it goes from computer to computer. And your digital wallet is a kind of virtual bank account that allows users to send or receive Bitcoins to pay for goods or services or save their money. But unlike traditional bank accounts, digital wallets are not using a bank to make the transaction. There's nobody, there's no third party that controls the currency. It's just between you and whoever you're purchasing something from. And so, of course, it's not insured by the FDIC. The government has absolutely nothing to do with this. So... Because there are no banks, there's no transaction fees, there's no need to even give your real name or any name at all. And it's interesting because more merchants are beginning to accept them. You can buy things like web hosting, services, pizza, even manicures. People could send bitcoins to each other using mobile apps or their computers, and it's similar to sending cash digitally. Your wallet is in the cloud, but because of that, you have to be very careful. There have been cases where servers have been hacked and people have lost all of their money in their Bitcoin because their computers were hacked. And they also have lost their Bitcoin if their computer's stolen because it's being stored in your computer. So that means that's your little bank. If someone steals your hard drive or steals your computer, that's it. They take your money. So you have to be very, very careful about that. You can also accidentally delete them and viruses can destroy them. So it's really crazy. And even some companies have fled with clients' Bitcoins. It's, you know, it's been full of treachery for sure. The interesting thing is Bitcoins can be used to buy merchandise anonymously. In addition, international payments are easy and cheap because Bitcoins are not tied to any country or subject to regulation. Small businesses may like them because there are no credit card fees. And some people just buy Bitcoins as an investment, hoping that they'll go up in value because they have fluctuated all over the place in terms of their value. You do buy them on an exchange, and there are several marketplaces called Bitcoin exchanges that allowed people to buy or sell Bitcoins using different currencies. The largest one was in Japan, and it was called Mt. Gox, G-O-X. That was the largest Bitcoin exchange. It launched in July 2010, and by 2013 was handling 70% of all Bitcoin transactions at Mt. Gox. 
But in order to buy bitcoins, you have to go to a bitcoin exchange, a place where you wire funds from traditional currencies and they dispense bitcoins in return, kind of like going to the bank. The largest and oldest was Mt. Gox, but now they've had some real problems. Um, they had a security problem, and some of the bitcoins, the rumor said, might have gone missing due to a vulnerability in their code. When Mt. Gox finally came clean to the public, it turned out that 750,000 of its customers' bitcoins and 100,000 of their own had been stolen. That's about $510 million worth of money of U.S. dollars missing. Or to put it another way, about 7% of the entire Bitcoin money supply disappeared all at once, and Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy. In February 2014, Mt. Gox suspended trading, closed its website and exchange service, and fled for the form of bankruptcy protection from creditors. And in April 2014, it began liquidation proceedings and announced it had about 850,000 bitcoins belonging to customers and the company that the company said were missing and likely stolen and an amount valued at more than $450 million at that time. So although 200,000 bitcoins have since been found, the reason for the di disappearance, theft, fraud, mismanagement, or a combination of all, are unclear as of March 2014, according to Wikipedia, but some of the speculation of hackers being responsible for the bitcoins, but there's been nothing proven. So they think that people just hacked into Mt. Gox, and this is one of the vulnerabilities of investing in Bitcoin. So the Japanese bankruptcy trustee handling Mt. Gox says there's a six month extension for creditors to register claims, and they're doing a formal investigation. But uh, it's, it's crazy, and there, it looks like you know other exchanges have stepped up. You can now go to a place called Coinbase, C O I N B A S E dot com, or Blockchain, B L O C K C H A I N dot com, to buy them. Coinbase dot com or Blockchain dot com, and you can do buy. You can buy your Bitcoins there. You can also buy fractions of a Bitcoin. As of today, the current price of a Bitcoin is $521.41, but it does change. And so you can buy fractions of that. If you only needed $100, you could buy roughly 20, a little over 20%, and buy $100 worth of Bitcoins, for example. To do that, you use your bank routing ID number and an account number. No credit cards are allowed. Though each Bitcoin transaction is recorded in a public log, names of buyers and sellers are never revealed, only their wallet IDs. While that keeps Bitcoin's users' transactions private, it also lets them buy or sell anything without easily tracing it back to them. That's why it's become the currency of choice for people online buying, unfortunately, drugs or other illicit activities. Other Bitcoin imitations may also arise, other cryptocurrencies, and my advice to you is to be very, very cautious for now. If you're going to engage in this, really consider it like gambling. Consider it very risky. Don't let too much build up your computer account because you could lose them or get hacked. You go from your Bitcoin through a payment processor to convert it to cash. And there are now Bitcoin ATMs that are appearing and all kinds of ways to continue to use Bitcoin. So may it become more safe in the future? It's possible, but it is kind of the Wild West out there right now with Bitcoin. And, you know, who knows what the next generation of currency is? Again, law enforcement doesn't like the anonymity. There are legitimate uses, but it's also being used anon anonymously to buy drugs, unfortunately, hire assassins, trade child porn, and dodge taxes. Dreadful. So... Digital currency is coming, though, and that's something that the government is wanting to be the next big trend so they can tax people. They want digital currency so they can actually keep track of every 
every transaction that you make for tax purposes. Whereas with cash right now, you have anonymity too. Just like with Bitcoin, if you pay with cash, you go and you buy something, you pay cash. That person doesn't know who you are, doesn't have any way to identify you. So Bitcoin in that way is sort of like using cash. But the government is just watching what's going on, and they are wanting to go to digital currency. But their form of digital currency is going to be more like buying things with your phone and buying things through your bank and in a way that's more controlled and not anonymous to the government. But definitely you're going to be buying more things with your computer and with phones, but I wouldn't invest in Bitcoin I'd stay a million miles away from it. I think it's highly speculative and not safe. And it's hard to make any assumptions about the future of it and what's going to happen. So don't get caught up in the hype. I know there have been tips for people to buy into this because the price has been all over the place and people talk about how much money they've made in Bitcoin. But realize a lot of people have lost money in Bitcoin as well, and many people have had their Bitcoin stolen. So just be really, really careful. If you insist on investing, limit your investment to a speculative amount, as if you're going to a casino. And I would take your profits regularly and take money out of this. This is not an investment. Consider it a gamble. So what you learned today is what is Bitcoin, what's happened to it, and what is the dark side of Bitcoin. A good step forward today and a way to take small positive action steps for 21 days, which is how many days it takes to change an old habit, is to sign up for my free course, 21 Days to a Wealthy Mindset. Because how you think and what you believe is possible for you is the most important step to building wealth. So get started today taking your first action step at BeWealthyAndSmart.com. Hey, have you heard about our super rich and fabulous cruise we're going on in November 2014? For people who don't want to run out of money in retirement or have a business and would like the opportunity to be on an international cruise ship and be a speaker and also have an awesome time we're going to relax some. We're going to talk about money and investing and finance. We're going to talk about business and generating an income online, where to grow more wealth, best ways to generate income, where billionaires are planning to make their next fortunes, and you can too. And we're all going to do this together on this amazing ship, an amazing ship. All the details are at lindapjones.com forward slash cruise, C-R-U-I-S-E. It's an amazing value. We're going to the Caribbean. We're leaving from Miami, going to San Juan, St. Thomas, St. Martin, and back the first week in November 2014, and we are going to have such an amazing time. I did the same cruise last year. We had so much fun. We're doing it again. So again, go to lindapjones.com forward slash cruise or bewealthyandsmart.com forward slash cruise. It gets you to the same place. Great information there. All the pricing is there. It's a great value. We're going to have so much fun. Come with us. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.